Hey, friends and fans, Ryan Dorn here answering your listener questions sent into Ryan at RyanDorn.com. Whether you're watching this on the YouTube channel or listening on the podcast, be sure to subscribe so that you never miss all of our updates. All right, here comes a question uh, from one of my fellow media sales warriors out there, Cindy. And um, I do media sales in about 15 other different categories of sales, but I have a lot of friends in the media business uh, like Cindy. And she asked this question, even though I'm a seasoned sales professional, there's an area that I greatly struggle with. I do fantastic in speaking with people about their ad plans and their goals. We have a great conversation, then I promise to create a proposal. Then I realize the proposal is going to take a lot of time. And so a lot of times I don't get around to the proposal or it's significantly delayed. What do I do? So Cindy, this is just a part of sales life, but uh, your good friend Ryan is, is here to help. I tend to rinse and repeat my best proposals all the time. Now, let's back up one step though, Cindy and everybody. If every single time you meet with a client, you've got to do a custom proposal, it's no wonder that you might be losing your mind and just don't have time to do it. That's why I'm a big fan and why I talked, uh, dedicated a whole chapter in my sales book, Selling Forward, to not doing customized proposals. I know it sounds good, but I don't have any empirical data that doing a customized proposal actually earns more business. It's not that it doesn't work. It just takes a lot of time. So I'm a big fan, and I talk about it in the book, of recommendation-based selling. So what I do is I look at the client I'm going to meet with. Let's just say as an example, I, I don't know, they're a lawnmower company, just as an example. We've worked with other uh, lawn and garden people in the past. So what I do is I look back at what we did with companies like that in the past. I take that proposal, I revise it a little bit, and I take it to the meeting. That way I don't have to leave to create a proposal. Now people say to me all the time, oh, how do you know what to put in the proposal? You didn't ask them their goals. You didn't ask them their needs. You didn't find out their desires. Well, because typically most customers want three things, new business, recurring business and more referrals. Well, because I know that I can give them recommendations and whatever their big goal in the sky is, I can work that goal into the recommendations. Recommendations are more like channels. I just need to find out from them what creative do they want to push into our channels. So Cindy, if I'm being honest and you've known me for quite some time, I just typically don't create proposals after the fact. I mean, I might tweak on things, but I take old proposals, I revise those proposals, call them recommendations, go into the meeting with a proposal, and I'm at about a 30% better close rate because of it. Now don't forget, based on some of our past questions and past advice, all your proposals should have three pricing options. You should be following up every three business days, following the rule of three and three, three words in the email, subject line, three sentences max, keep your proposals to three main points. I mean. Cindy and everybody, I think if you follow that advice, you'll just reduce your stress and get a lot more done. So Cindy, appreciate you and really, really great question. Hey, keep those questions coming. Love to answer them. Send them into Ryan at RyanDorn.com. Friends, never forget, if this job was easy, if sales was easy, everybody would be doing it and they're not. We're not crazy. It's a great career. It'll feed your family for a lifetime. All right, stick around, stay close. More sales tips, listener questions straight ahead.